G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday sort of afternoon here in Australia and the thing that stands out to me the most in the market at the moment is this. Bitcoin dominance is dropping. So it's now down to 65%. We're up in the 70% before. And I did say that for a real altcoin season to start, we needed to see Bitcoin dominance drop. And it is doing that uh, ever so slowly but surely. And look, Bitcoin is just ranging sideways at the moment. And that's what we really need. That is really going to start that altcoin season. We can see ETH dominance is up to 13.8%. Gas price is coming down, which is great. Uh, we need those in the single digits. And look, you know, this new layer two are uh, being rolled out and side chains and all the rest of it. It just can't happen quick enough. It's still too expensive for, you know, cheap uh, minor transactions to be done on Ethereum. But again, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, they say. So, you know, give it time. They are hoping that uh, ETH 2.0, uh, the sharding sort of uh, stage and that will come out sometime this year uh, and in the not too distant future and ETH 2.0 complete rollout I have heard that maybe by early next year uh, that would be fantastic that is really what is going to uh, halt Ethereum's you know kind of dominance once they can get on top of that stuff uh, there'll be nothing holding them back from there uh, you know Except for a glitch uh, in the, you know, a bug in the system. But they haven't found that yet. All right, let's have a look. So we're over that $1 trillion mark again, which is good. Although only a few minutes ago, this was uh, $1 trillion uh, and $39 billion. So it's come down a little bit. But that's all right. It's fluctuating in and out at the moment. Again, people are jumping in and out, you know, taking profits and all the rest of it. And we will speak about that very soon. Now, as we can see over here, Bitcoin, 36,000. Uh, it really is just kind of ranging around that kind of $35,000, $37,000 range, you know, fluctuates up and down, uh, and it could start coming down some more. Again, we will have a look at that shortly. Uh, but this is good for altcoin season. That's all we need. While Bitcoin is just ranging, again, fluctuating between certain prices, obviously not fluctuating between, let's say, 100000 and 50000 uh, That would be catastrophic for the market. But again, just kind of ranging, you know, 37000 38000 down to maybe sort of 35000 34000 Great for altcoins. And they are doing very well. Now let's have a look. The big movers, oh, there we go, Aval Avalanche, 39% uh, engine coin, finally, thank goodness, 33% in the last uh, 24 hours. I think I'm finally in profit in engine coin after holding onto it for many months because I just believe in the project. But look, I think last time I checked, I was only maybe 3% in profit. So uh, look, any profit's better than no profit, though. Uh, the graph as well, doing extremely well. So I'm happy with that. I bought that only not that long ago. Uh, it dropped down about 20% uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and now it's now come back up. But similar to Engine Coin, just I haven't had it for so long. I think I'm only a little bit in profit with the graph. But that's more a long-term hold. I, I like what the graph is doing. Cardano, I mean, look. You know, these are all, you know, good double digit gains in 24 hours. Uh, and we can see the seven day period. Look, they're not doing too bad either. Uh, Sushi Swap, again, that's just, you know, come out of nowhere. And congratulations to uh, Alex Saunders from Nuggets News. You know, I bagged this project because it had so many issues early on. And look, he got onto it and said it had good fundamentals and all the rest of it. And I think they've got a thousand uh a 10x return on it or something like that i saw a tweet from him before so you know good on him sometimes you know you can't get them all right and look he's been wrong about things as well but he got that one right and congratulations to him and everyone else that got on board with sushi again yearn finance i'm pretty sure has uh taken over sushi and it sushi is a uh, fork of uniswap but look uniswap doing well uh curve you know dow uh congratulations then well done Polka dots been on an absolute screamer. Uh, I'm waiting for it to, you know, kind of slow down and have a pullback. But look, there's no guarantees that that'll do that because uh, I would like to buy some more polka dot, but I don't want to buy it when it's on the way up. I want to buy it uh, when it's sort of, you know, come back down. So at the moment for me, uh, you know, I've got some cash sitting on the side uh, and I'm getting that, you know, FOMO feeling to just dive in. And that's how I know not to. Now is not the time. I'm going to wait. There will be a pullback at some stage from all of these. Uh, and we'll talk about that very shortly. Now let's have a look. Losers though. Has there been any big losers? 
Look, nothing too major. Again, you know, double-digit losses for two of them here. But, you know, Voyager token, there we go. It's lost 11% from 120% in seven days. That's really nothing. I don't think anyone's too upset about that. Uh, IOST lost 20%, uh, but it's still up 70% basically in seven days. And then look, all the rest of these are just single digit sort of losers. So there's nothing really too bad going on there. All right, what I want to do is go on to uh, a few stories before we have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So multiple DeFi mainstays cracked top 20 in long-awaited great repricing. For DeFi believers, vindication has been every bit as profitable as it's been sweet. So there was a DeFi con a bubble earlier in the year, and then, you know, as some people would say, it popped. It didn't pop. It just had the normal correction that it was always going to have. And I believe the same thing is going to happen very shortly. Uh, and again, we'll get onto that shortly. I'll continue. Hardcore decentralized finance uh, adherents uh, woke up today to a long-awaited site of CoinGecko's top 100 rankings by market cap. Native decoins for popular DeFi platforms, Synthetic and Aave, have cracked into the top 20, and uh, and event DeFi observers have heralded as the great repricing. Look, I'm super bullish on both of these, uh, and I think they have real long-term value as well. But again, that's just my personal opinion. It's not financial advice. Uh, I still think they will uh, have a hefty correction uh, when it finally does go into a bear market. So that's something you need to keep in mind. But I think long term, synthetics is just constantly doing new things. Kane and you know everyone involved with synthetics now, they just you know keep pushing this uh, project forwards. Now they've got the uh, L2 optimistic uh, roll ups, you know, happening on there. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and Ave. You know, financial license over um, in Europe. Uh, you know, they're talking about bringing mortgage loans onto Aave and things like that. So, yeah, super bullish on both of these projects. And they are uh, two of my sort of main uh, main altcoins that I'm putting uh, money into. So, obviously, Bitcoin, super bullish on that. Super bullish uh, on Ethereum uh, and very bullish on Synthetics, Aave uh, and Chainlink. Uh, all three of those are up there, although Synthetics has the greater uh, foothold, and I probably need to put a little bit more into Aave. All right, so DeFi investor users and builders have long argued that the sector uh, writ large is wildly undervalued relative to other uh, cryptocurrency uh, projects given DeFi's uh, user base, cash flows from protocol fees and soaring levels of acti activity compared to zombie chain layer one networks scattered throughout the top rankings. So what we can actually do here, all right, where are we? DeFi, that's the one I'm looking for. DeFi Pulse. I can remember not long ago, this was down, you know, 9 billion and 7 billion and 6 billion. We're now at $23.72 billion locked up in total DeFi. So this just continues to grow. So let's go one year. This will really show uh, what it's done. There we go. Again, we were talking about this a few months back when it was just, you know, a couple of billion dollars. And now look at it, it is just soaring. But what's even more scary about this, so there's $23 billion locked up uh, in DeFi. Total market cap of over a trillion dollars. It's less than a percent of the total sort of cap. Oh no, not less than a percent, sorry. Uh, but look, it's, it's low. Uh, oh, that might be, no, I think that's about 2%, something like that uh, around there. E either way, it's not uh, a lot of the market cap. And really, what is the world driven by? Uh, finance. So when I think about a trillion dollar market cap, I can easily see, you know, if this gets up to sort of $3 trillion, $4 trillion, the entire market cap, and look, I, could, I think it's going to go much, much higher in the future, I can see hundreds of billions of dollars, if not even at some stage, you know, in the next, say, 10 years, trillions of dollars locked up in DeFi. So, sorry, we go over here. Imagine trillions of dollars, and imagine what that does to the prices of some of these. Now, not all of these will last. Some will come and go and die, and look, 
I believe in synthetics, but maybe it won't be the big one. There'll be something else that'll come along and there'll be a bug in the system. And same with Aave and all the rest of it. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. But I really do think DeFi, if you can, there we go, Aave right there. If you can get onto the uh, good ones early on and they do have that first uh, mover advantage and, you know, have good teams and all the rest of it, you know, the ceiling to these is absolutely massive. I think that can be legitimately life changing sort of gains to be made and again i like synthetics uh, i like uh, look i like most of these uh, in all fairness but i can't inv well i could invest in all of them but i don't want to uh, synthetics i think the derivatives market is really going to be big Aave with lending and all the rest of it uh, yeah really like uh, what they're doing but again i like uniswap i like compound i like maker uh, yeah ren uh, big on Ren. Yearn Finance, you know, continues uh, to do well and they have a very small uh, number of coins available, which is both good and bad. So yeah, DeFi, uh, I, th I do think another bubble's coming though. I think it's going to pop soon and we'll get onto that shortly. All right, so good old fake crypto giveaway scam still generates over half a million dollars a week. Please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching YouTube, uh, or there's any kind of Telegram, Discord, Twitter, whatever it is. If anyone says, please send me crypto uh, and I will double what I send back to you, it's a scam. No one's giving out free crypto, pure and simple. Airdrops do, but they don't ask you to hand shit over other than they say, can you please put down your, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, Ethereum address or, you know, whatever it is. And they only ask for your address, not your private keys and all the rest of it, or not you to send them crypto first to then get crypto back. That is a scam. I, I really want everyone to be oh so careful. Anyone new to the space, don't click on links from anything. Go and find the official website. Go to the official website. And when you go when you go there, you'll get the real information unless their whole website's been hacked and then look, the whole thing's done anyway. Everyone's in really big trouble. Uh, the main websites is where you're going to get the proper information from. Any uh, you know emails with someone, even if it says it's them and you need to immediately hand over you know your uh, seed phrase and all the rest of it so we can secure the system and make sure you're all right it's a scam it's 100 percent a scam that is not how they're going to do it uh they're not going to ask you ever to hand over your keys uh like ledger and you know any of those wallets they don't need your keys for anything they will fix it from the back end anyone asking for your keys or asking you to send them crypto because you know it needs to be exchanged for the native uh, coin or something that's a scam that is a straight up scam. Although I did talk about uh, Enigma uh, and then migrating over to uh, Secret Network. That one's legit. That one I know for a fact is legit. But that doesn't mean there can't be scammers out there pretending to be uh, SRT and trying to get your Enigma and all the rest of it. So just please be careful. There's so many scams out there and they're just constant. Uh, I'm always getting emails, you know, someone, you know, with these offers, you know what I mean? They could do all this stuff and, and I never uh, solicited it. It's just randomly showed up. So I just delete, block them and all the rest of it. So anyone watching my videos, please be careful. Right, Bitcoin futures market indicator hits $13 billion record. We we're talking about this just the other day. It just keeps continuing to grow. So aggregated open interest in Bitcoin futures across 12 leading exchanges topped $13 billion on the 14th of January according to data from SKU Analytics. The space is heating up, ladies and gentlemen. What is going to happen over these next sort of, you know, maybe nine to, you know, maybe 14, 15, 18 months time, because no one knows exactly when the top is going to be in, is literally going to, you know, melt your face. Excuse me, as I've said in a couple of my thumbnails before, you, you, know, you won't be able to believe the kind of gains that are going to be made. Now, please, I have to say this every video, none of what I say is financial advice. I'm not a financial uh, financial, uh, you know, accredited uh, advisor or anything like that. It's just my personal opinion. And look, when I say you're not going to be able to believe the gains, uh, you still need to do some research. Please go and do some research on, you know, what to invest in. And again, learn cycles. I've gone through this plenty of times before. I don't want people to get totally wrecked. 
Can you get in now and make a lot of money? Yes, you absolutely can, but tomorrow it could drop by 50%. Uh, and if you're not in a good project and you don't understand the cycles, you'll probably panic sell uh, and not realize that in you know two, three months time, uh, you'll be back into, you know if you've got into good projects, possibly you know three, four X on the money that you put in. And again, that's not financial advice, no guarantees on that, just be careful. But the reason I am still extremely bullish uh, on uh, cryptocurrencies and look, even, even stocks this would go towards. I don't invest in stocks at the moment. They don't have the upside potential. But here, the IMF gives global governments a clear message. Spend. <laughs> they want uh, governments to continue to spend even though there's not any money really being made because you know pretty much everyone's shut down and in lockdown. What that is saying is you know print more money. Plain and simple, print more money. As long as money continues to get printed, it's going to go into, you know, it goes to little businesses and all the rest of it, but, you know, it, it flows into, you know, big investment stocks and cryptocurrencies and things like that. So really until we've got a rollout uh, and, you know, the basically everything is, you know, pretty much cleared up uh, from COVID and all the rest of it, they're just going to print more and more money and that's worldwide it's not just america it's countries all over the world and that is going to push the prices up uh of again all those kind of assets so yeah i'm still super bullish i don't think we're anywhere near with anywhere near the top the top won't be in until you know the pandemic uh, is you know at least they've got a handle on it and they've you know put these uh what you call it uh, the vaccines out and they've seen that the vaccines work because at the moment uh, it's all experimental we don't really know uh, how effective they are until they're out there and you know we see the cases significantly dropping down very very quickly all right and another reason so paypal paypal's bitcoin revenue expected to top two billion dollars by 2023 so that's what i mean you know we will have a a retracement at some stage but because of the mass adoption and the way things are happening so fast now I don't think we will see a 60 70 percent uh, correction in Bitcoin ever again I think those days might be over again I, I don't know that for a fact but I would say there's definitely going to be a peak though there's going to be a top I don't know when it's coming and I don't know what price it's coming at hence why you know you need to do your own research and take some profits uh, in cash, uh, I'm, well, not so much cash, but you know the dollar. We still need dollar. The dollar is not dead yet. Uh, it's not a great store of value, but you do need dollars. And again, but look, if you're holding long term, particularly in Bitcoin, then I think you're going to be fine. You know, trying to you know work out the tops and the bottoms and when to take profits and when not to is pretty hard. So, as my personal opinion, and that's all it is, is just buy and hold. Uh, you know, I, again, in you know, four years time from now, we're going to be right back sort of where we are now in another bull market. And I have no idea what the price might be then. But my guess is it'll be a lot higher than whatever price it is uh, that you're getting into now. But you know, if you're quickly trying to flip it and make some money, be very careful, we could have a severe correction tomorrow, we just don't know. But if you, you know, at least intelligent enough to sort of hold for a while, chances are based on previous history, you'll be better, you, you know, you'll be more up than you are down. But again, please do your research. Now, $2 billion by 2023. Now, the reason for that is currently, PayPal only sells the cryptocurrencies to the states. Uh, they haven't gone worldwide with it yet. So the demand that they've had has been big, and it's been from all the US investors. Once they uh, provide this to, you know, worldwide, you know, again, they've got a few cryptocurrencies on there, so Bitcoin will really start to move, Ethereum will really start to move, Litecoin will really start to move, and I think they have uh, Bitcoin Cash there, or Ethereum Classic, I, th I think it's Bitcoin Cash. There's four of them. They will really start to rocket, and again, the thing is, people will naturally look for the cheaper one. They'll see Bitcoin and they'll go, oh God, I don't have, you know, let's say, sixty-five thousand dollars to buy a bitcoin uh but they might look at a litecoin and go oh geez i can get one of those for 240 bucks all right i'm buying one at 240 because i think it's going to you know 60 something thousand dollars uh and that's just the human psychology so uh 
I'm not saying Bitcoin won't go up, it will, but whatever the cheaper one uh, on there is, that will probably see some more significant gains would be my guess. And look, you know, we, we wait and see what happens. PayPal will add more cryptocurrencies in the future. You can guarantee. Uh, but again, they're only going to put the ones on there that really are here to last. And that means, you know, they've been regulated and all the rest of it. All right. So over here, uh, Bitcoin chaos. Wall Street icon Burton McHale explains how cryptocurrencies could collapse. <sighs> There's so much FUD out there. But I read the article and, and he does have some sort of points. Now this is him over here. He, he looks like he's a fairly uh, senior gentleman. I've spoken about this before. You know, once you get older, and particularly when you're getting into your 70s and your 80s and things like that, generally, now not all old people, because it's, you know, the, everyone's an individual, but generally you just, you find it hard to deal with change. You know, you really set in your ways and all the rest of it and you can't see behind your own biases. And I mean, that happens throughout everyone's age, but it's hard to keep, you know, up with the latest thing. And I think he's just really missed it. Uh, but in saying that, he did make some really good points. And we need to cover off, you know, what's the downsides to Bitcoin? Could it collapse? Could it fail? Yep, absolutely could. Anything can. Doesn't matter what it is. The governments could fail. The banks could fail. Tesla could fail. Facebook could fail. But we need to look at it on a, um, like, pro what's the probability of it happening? What are the chances that are, that are out there that it might happen? I'd say the chances are low. But here are some things that he brought up, and, and I do agree. This is what might, uh, I won't even say might, could bring Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrencies down. All governments uh, have rightly been very particular about their, their sole right to issue and control currencies. Absolutely, they all have been. Mr. McHale also explains how Bitcoin's reliance on energy usage could prove problematic while presenting a window of opportunity for any government intent on clamping down on the cryptocurrencies. He adds, governments can shut down the exchanges on which our cryptocurrencies are traded. They could. Uh, I don't think they're going to. There's just too much revenue. The taxes that they're going to make from cryptocurrencies re really kind of negate that. Why would they do that? You know, everyone's searching for ways to make money without, you know, just printing new money. This is one. Since Bitcoin mining operations use considerable computer power and are energy intensive, restrictions can be imposed on the computers that run the public distributed ledger central to transaction network. Creating a single token requires as much electricity as the typical American house consumes in two years. So look, this that's probably the biggest point. But in saying that, I think they will just find ways. There'll be green energy and all the rest of it and then, you know, that kind of negates that. But that is something that again, they are going to look at. But if they go to green energy, then it kind of negates that. Uh, you know, yeah, I just, I can't see it happening as long as, you know, they can find ways to go to, uh, you know, green energy and all the rest of it. Now, something that uh, would be interesting is if Bitcoin would ever move to proof of stake. Because that would totally sort of negate that. You know, the proof of work uh, is very expensive and all the rest of it. And I don't know if Bitcoin could, but I remember someone talking about it on a podcast ages ago. And I just sort of imagine that's what Bitcoin did. That would then negate all of that. And I wonder if that's something that's being talked about and looked uh, at in the future. Who knows? But I would agree, these are probably the biggest things is governments just, you know, try and outright ban it. Although I think, you know, that's... It, it, it's too late for that. They can't. It's out there. There's been too many big businesses that have got into it. You know, they would, you know, severely hurt the, the businesses that have already invested a, a lot into it. And again, there's too many people out there, uh, you know, using it and all the rest of it. It is now just, it's been regulated. So that's not going to happen. They're not going to crack down on something that's regulated. But I think they could definitely... Uh, bring in regulations that would make it extremely hard uh, and go after, you know, rogue uh, exchanges and all the rest of it, which they are, but that's more regulation. I don't think they're going to try and ban it. I think that's just too late. It's uh, gone. But I think, uh, again, something that they could look at is, you know, how much electricity, how much power is used. But again, if they go green energy, then that completely negates that. So really, I think all of these can be negated, but these would be the things where they would try to bring it down. But I just don't see it happening. All right, let me know uh, your thoughts down below. 
do you think these are kind of the main concerns for you know cryptocurrency and in particular sort of bitcoin uh or is there something else that would be the the bigger catalyst that could bring bitcoin down i, I think he pretty much nailed it on the head Th these would be the ones but governments uh you know they're not they're not going to try and ban it anymore it's too late for that uh the energy part uh is something uh that is a concern but again a, a lot of them are going for well not a lot but at least a number of them are leaning towards green energy and i think that will continue so that will negate that love to know your thoughts down below what do you think is the biggest risk to bitcoin uh which you know would obviously uh, greatly affect all other cryptocurrencies all right stay safe be kind to one another if you're in those altcoins at the moment i'm sure you're making some pretty good gains and i'll see you next time